Hello and welcome to News Click. We are going to discuss with Paranjay Guatakuta the continuation of the Mossack Fonseca case, which has again hit the news. This Paranjay, as you know, is the second big tranche which has come after the first one which came in 2016, which of course we have already covered at least parts of it for us in News Click. This one seems to indicate that Mossack Fonseca was in deep trouble. Uh, because they did not know 75 to 80 percent of their clients and they were really dealing with the banks, the lawyers and willfully flouting all the laws. And they then tried to find out who the cl their clients were. were. Uh, before we go to the Indian scenario, who are the people involved, this is really a tip of the iceberg regarding what the tax havens do and how many companies like Mozak Fonseca are there. So what do you think is the likely impact of such, shall we say, breaches of confidence? Because the whole purpose of the tax haven is to hide your identity. Now, if you can, if this can be breached, as Mozak Fonseca's uh, security was breached, do you think this whole tax haven issue is now going to unfold? Do you think it's really going to make a difference to the tax havens because of all of this? Probably not. For some time now, the very countries that were responsible for promoting these tax havens have at least officially expressed a lot of concern. In fact, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, which is a grouping of the richest countries in the world, they have an initiative called BEPS, the Base Erosion and Profit Shifting Initiative. The whole idea is to prevent large companies, including Apple and a whole lot of other companies, from shifting their profits to low tax or no tax jurisdiction. Now, this is hurting the richest countries in the world. It's hurting countries that have promoted dozens of... But you know, Paranjay, it might hurt the countries, but it's helping a certain group of companies Absolute. and people. Absolutely. So therefore, the countries may be saying all this publicly, but what they have done till now no bite in any of this. And let's not forget, two of the largest conduits for tax purposes is shifting is uh, Holland and UK. Okay. These are the two biggest right. ones. Let's take a step back. On the 5th of April 2016, you had the Panama Papers. This was the leak of over 11 and a half million this is documents. 2016. That's correct. Mozak Fonseca. Thereafter, you had from another company, similar company, accountants, financial consultant firm, this time in Bahamas, and that was called the Paradise Papers. Now, in this time, Paradise Papers, the aftermath, you have an additional 1.2 million new documents. And, of course, the Indian uh, uh, many thousands of Indians involved. Remember, this is the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists together with this German newspaper called Sadhush Zeitung. Now, in, in they are the ones who received the original Mozart That's Mozart correct. And that's right. And they took the help of the ICIJ and they put together teams of journalists in across 90 countries, including the Indian Express in India, to put it together. Now, the old data included relatives and associates of the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping. But the person who was hurt was the former prime minister of Pakistan, Mia Nawaz Sharif. Also who, Iceland. Iceland, anyway, that's correct. Say, One minute. When you say Putin, they have said associates. Associates. Putin, and again. Alleged associates. Again, I don't know how, you know, how close they are to Putin Precisely. Or not, because Russia was facing sanctions. So there was an element of all the sanction beating that they were doing. So I would put that a you lot know, of the Putin issues really or could be. The, the, the more important point in this regard is the persons who have been hurt the most, barring the Iceland Prime Minister and the Pakistan Prime Minister, Myanmar Sharif, who was barred from holding an, his office by the Supreme Court in July 2017, most of these names are not from the Western countries. That is the more substantive point. So we have Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Syria, Argentina, Morocco, Pakistan, India, Argentina, Azerbaijan, Qatar, UAE, 
South Africa, Zimbabwe, Sudan, Ivory Coast, etc., etc., etc. The important point is not you again on this occasion in the in the aftermath you find Lionel Messi all over again. Now he is obviously not exactly in the best of in the best frame of mind that as as we talk, but you also have the Argentine president. You have Mauricio Macri, and the new name that has come up is of course. Pierre Cartier of France, uh, the well-known uh, fashion, uh, what should I say, fashionista, or I don't know if that's the right word I'm using. Of course, we had earlier the Jackie Chan. But the point that you're making, the more substantive point, have things changed? Will things change? Difficult to say. It's early days. And the other part of it, that City of London itself is a kind of tax haven, if you will. And in the United States, there are a large number of tax havens within the country. Right. Delaware, Florida, Arizona, and principal principalities and microstates in Europe, Monaco, Liechtenstein, San Marino, among others. So what happens is the big countries also have captive, shall we say, uh, tax havens. And those who don't have tax havens, we of course can claim to have Mauritius, and we seem to have or at least the rich in India, have used it for various purposes. We also have Singapore, we've had Seychelles, we have the UAE, yes. Yes, Dubai is again one of those who, right. which has acted. In fact, Taiwan is another one which is not considered a tax haven, but has also been a, shall we say, a sink of a lot of this money. You know, in, in fact, you know, there was even a proposal at some point of time in India to even try and make a, an island in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands into a tax haven. It, uh, it never really took off, that proposal. Yeah, I think it will be still difficult for public to support it. That's why the Mauritius so route, Mauritius route is there. Yes, as you know, I worked so on a book on the subject. Exactly. Yeah. So coming back to this, that what you are telling me is that if you look at all of this, that the pressure still to regulate the tax havens, and it's not very difficult. You don't have to go and regulate the tax havens. Most of them are actually under British jurisdiction. A whole lot of them are under British jurisdiction. But the conduit countries can be very easily regulated through which all of this takes place. And the conduit countries are only about five or six. And now, ones. you take, for instance, the India-Mauritius double tax. In 2016, soon after Narendra Modi became prime minister, they actually plugged some of these loopholes. And they also you know, plugged the loopholes pertaining to participatory notes through which you know it becomes easy to conceal the identif uh, identities of people who are investing money or what to use that technical par parlance called UBOs, ultimate beneficiary owners of these companies and things. Now what happened in India? Even though these loopholes were plugged, what were put in place are what are called grandfathering clauses. That means an easy transition mechanism. So. It gives people that, like the foreign institutional investors, among others, the portfolio investors, to set up base in the Netherlands, in France, and other jurisdictions. So, back to the issue that you, we are raising, that's the biggies who are really involved in this. And those biggies are European big countries, which have acted as conduits because they have their old colonial connections, through which the big business of these countries also operate. India, for instance, to UK, and we can see that this, as we are going to come to, what the Mozart Fonseca papers now show, that the most of the connections are to British Virgin Islands. Many of them, and absolutely. half the Mozart Fonseca clients operated through British Virgin through Islands. Through many of them, they indeed operate through British Virgin Islands. Half of them. Half the total number of clients of, of Mozart Fonseca are from British Virgin now, Islands. You know, companies. when you look at outcomes, now, when the Indian Express put it out, they said, what has been the impact of the expose of 2016? And what is the outcome? And this is what they get from the government of India, the income tax department. As you know, a, a group, a sort of a multi-agency group, it's called the MAG, was set up to specifically look into this. They made a number of global inquiries, 150 of them. This is India. The number of clients that were being investigated in India were 426. I'm giving you exact numbers. Number of search and seizure operations, 58. And the number of prosecutions filed in Indian courts, hello, only 16. And what does 
what is it officially claimed as what they claim allegedly the undisclosed income that means income not disclosed to the income tax authorities come to think of it when you look at the scale of the operations it's very small it's a little over a thousand crores is 1088 crores which when converted into US dollars at the prevailing exchange rate is 162.4 million. So when you look at, when you this say... This is over a period of how many years? Over a period of a long time. We don't know how long, really. So you are right when you say this is the tip of that proverbial iceberg. What about the new tranche of documents and what any big names? Of course, you've already said Lionel Messi. That could also show... Uh, be a reason why Argentina's <laughs> awful form in the World Cup and Messi's as well. And, and, and the Argentinian president, I mentioned his name well, also. I don't um, think he was playing football. So no, he wasn't. On that count, he's, he's, the, that did not explain again, the football. Again, the same result. story. As in the case of uh, Vladimir Putin and, and, and uh, Xi Jinping, relatives and alleged associates. Now, what is an associate? How do you link with them? Uh, that. No, but his case, there are much more solid yeah, issues. Sure. Because he tried to get his name removed from some of the documents. But it's interesting when you look at a similar attempts. And I would say perhaps the most interesting such example is the biggest star of them all in India. The one and only Amitabh Bachchan. Now here I am merely telling you what has been reported in the Indian Express. Now the first tranche of papers alleged that there were two shipping companies called Lady Shipping and Treasure Shipping with which Mr. Bachchan was allegedly associated according to the Masak Fonseca documents. Now what happens? What the new information that they have is through a trust called Minerva Trust, Masak Fonseca serves a show cause. I mean, this trust is, by the way, the administrator of these two companies mentions, serves a notice on a third company, which is called Sea Bulk Shipping. And Mr. Bachchan is allegedly associated with this company as well. But wait, interestingly, Mossack Fonseca says, we don't want to act as your agent anymore, Sea Bulk, because you don't fulfill our, that is Mossack Fonseca's due diligence requirements. As for Mr. Bachchan, he didn't respond to the Indian Express. And he, of course, denies any association with these companies. The earlier tranche had talked about his daughter-in-law, Ashwari Rai, her parents and family. This time, this is the new bit of information that we have. But, but Prabir, we have a lot of other names who have come up. Uh, the name of Mr. Jahangir Soli Sorabji. Uh, the son so of the so former attorney former general. general. He's an honorary consultant uh, physician at Bombay Hospital. Uh, we have uh, K.P. Singh of the DLF group. Uh, once again, we have Mr. Anurag Kejriwal, who was the former Delhi chief of the Lok Satta Party. We have Naveen Mehra of Mehra Sons Jewelers. We have uh, the son of Iqbal Mirchi, who was wanted by the Bombay police, Mumbai police, who died in London, I think, five years ago. We have one Shiv Khemka, who uh, has floated hundreds of shell companies, has business with Russia. We have uh, PRS, B uh, also known as Biki, PRS Oberoi, who resigned as a director of one of these companies. We have Lokesh Sharma's company, who uh, has, has, runs a sports management uh, firm. We, we have uh, some uh, very, very interesting examples since we are talking about sports. On the day of the leak, the first leak in Mossack Fonseca, uh, Mossack Fonseca sent an email, a standard email to lots of people saying, we'll make sure these kind of quote unquote intrusions do not take place in the future. Now, interestingly, an Indian company, a chartered accountant company, P.P. Shah and Associates, send a, a, a mail to them saying, on behalf of one of its clients, a company, Whitefield Global Investments, on behalf of Mr. Chirayu Amin, saying, you know, what's going on? And in case our viewers are not familiar with who he is, Mr. Chirayu Amin was formerly associated with the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. He is the managing director of Alembic Pharmaceuticals and most importantly, he's chairman of the Indian Premier League, the Cricket League, and a vice president of the BCCI, the Board of Control for Cricket in India. There are many, many other interesting, uh, what should I say, anecdotes which have come uh, from these, uh, the Panama Papers, the aftermath. Um, 
if I have uh, a bit of time, I'll tell you the uh, alleged arms merchant, Sudhir Chaudhary, his son, Bhanu Chaudhary, their name comes in. Uh, with them, they were once in 2014 arrested by the serious fraud office in London for allegedly helping Rolls Royce uh, secure contracts in Indonesia, in China. Uh, one of the, in the complex web, a name comes up for Mr. One Mr. Sumanth Kapoor, who happens to be the son of a former chairman of the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Uh, his name is B.K. Kapoor. We have another unusual instance of a Kolkata-based businessman who I know very well. Uh, he was formerly associated with the CPIM and he's now a spokesperson of the BJP, Shishir Bajoria. He apparently had claimed that his name was due to a clerical error, but then he contacted Fonseca, Mosak Fonseca through an intermediary to change the beneficial ownership of a company called Haptic BVI with which uh, was subsequently liquidated in May 2016. Now, now these are all these allegations have been printed in black and white in the Indian Express. I really don't know whether they're correct or not correct, how accurate they are, but, but Indian Express seems to have done its, its job. Uh, there, there are a whole lot Let's of other names. These are documents of Mozak Fonseca. That's correct. <clears throat> Whether they are correct, is Mozak Fonseca keeping these documents of thousands of its clients in this wrongful way, as it were, as it's being claimed, is that really believable? Those are things we leave to the our viewers. And but before we conclude, three important sets of names I forgot. Okay. The son of <coughs> Sunil Bharti Mittal. Ah, Mr. Kavin Bharti Mittal, who was a British citizen until recently, he was an overseas citizen of India. Mr. Ajay Bijli and his family members, who are the have controlling interest in the PVR Cinemas chain, okay, and and the Danis, uh, uh, Jalaj Ashwin Dani and his family members, who uh, were closely associated with Asian pains. The, these are some of the other names which I and the big ones, mentioned, the, the big really names that big I ones. mentioned. Yeah. No, it's, a, it's an interesting issue. What happened was, and I think this in some sense is also the risk that now this black money holders of different kinds are going to face, that they may believe that the tax havens are very safe, but unfortunately for them, electronically, hacking is going to become shall we say... More risk, widespread? More, more widespread, more likely to be uh, done by insiders. Because what is being called by the German paper as John Doe, an anonymous person, he said, I really think these people are ripping off the people. And therefore, I, am, I for, my, for my conscience, I am giving this to you. Because so I, that, that kind of thing is much more likely to be the insider league. Yes, and, and if I can just add a, a line or two to what you said, you could essentially define such individuals as whistleblowers who choose to remain anonymous. I mean, I mean look at India. We have a, enacted a law on whistleblowers passed by both houses of parliament, but we don't have the rules in place. For all intents and purposes, that whistleblowers law is completely ineffective. And the point, the last point that I thought I should mention to you, at the end of the day, whether it's Panama, Bahamas, or the 90 plus tax havens across the globe, what are they selling at the end of the day? What are the services they're selling? Secrecy. Anonymity. Absolutely <clears throat> right. And that is the risk because everything being electronic means a single point failure. Anybody like Snowden who had access to the NSA data. Anybody in Mozak Fonseca who had access to the data could easily get all this data and make it public. So the belief that you can hide behind tax havens forgets that the tax havens have now become digital and therefore they're no longer as safe they used to be. And by the way, once you become public, you've lost the trust of anonymity. That is what you the clients can run, came to you for. but you can't hide. Now you're gone. So Mozak Fonseca really collapsed. They had no way of. Con they have actually shut their operations, as you know. So therefore, the data is even more public, and this is really an example of that. That once it decided they have to shut shop, there is nobody even to protect that data, and then all their thousands of clients who thought they are very safe because this is somewhere else are at risk. 
But at the end of the day, it's still for the, shall we say, the big countries to act to get their house in order. No, they no don't really about that fact. Because, you know, it's not only say, when you look at the globe, it's the rich countries. And when you look at within the not so rich countries, the developing countries, or what uh, Chairman Mao Zedong called the second world. So when you look at the second world and the third world countries, if you believe in those definitions, what these tax havens do is essentially help the rich within these countries, the rich and the powerful within the these countries. The rich country. within the countries, but the look at the other part of it. The money goes into the Western financial system. Absolutely and correct. And that is the reason. This is the way global finance capital become re-entrenches itself and exacerbates inequalities both Across globally and within nations. And we're not talking here about the Amazons and the Apples. That's and the another Google. story we should. That we will do another day. Okay. Because that's something which you really need to look and, at and how they are. And you'll have to find themselves. somebody who will talk to you about it. I'm not competent to talk about no, it. We can, we can, that's not the problem. Right. But the real issue is that the tax havens are perform two things. One is what's called tax avoidance, which is really, as you know, uh, Evading tax. No, no. In fact, help of lawyers uh, and the book that came out in December, uh, this book, it's, uh, it's called The Thin Dividing Line. And the thin dividing line is between the tax avoidance, which is supposed to be legal, and tax evasion, which is supposed to be illegal, which includes round tripping, money laundering, and, and so on. And that so is only how good, how good lawyers or accountants you have. Absolutely. That's really the difference. But the other part of it is avoidance of tax is one part. Other is to get the quote unquote illegal wealth from all over the world and put it in the Western financial system. Because ultimately, a, somebody in India, somebody in Pakistan, as you can see, they are not putting their money into Indian banks. If they're you recall, in the, the run up to the elections, Mr. Narendra Modi had said he would bring back all the illegal wealth that Indians had stashed, stashed, stashed away in Switzerland. And Baba Ramdev had said in 100 days of the new government, uh, 15 lakh rupees will be given to all the poor families. But then we know after that what the BJP president, Mr. Amit Shah, had to say. Jumla. Jumla. So this is easier said than done. Thank you very much, Paranjaya. We'll keep on discussing this issue because I don't think it's going to go away in a week. So let's see what further revelations come as, as it progresses, and then we can discuss this again. Thank you. Thank this you. is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and also visit our website 